All right, I want to do a real quick video here. A lot of people have been asking what books I recommend on how to identify herbs and, and how to use the herbs and whatever else. Um, well, uh, we're still studying. Okay, We are not experts in herbology or anything by any stretch of the imagination. So I can't really give a big list of books that I would recommend at this point. But I will give you the basics of how you get started. Okay, um, Pick this one here. This is a saw this pretty little flower here as I can keep it still without shaking all over the place pretty little flower there and uh, it's a beautiful little plant and what you do is you look at something like this you can take a picture of it or if there's plenty of them around and things just pick one and then what you want to do is you want to get a a uh, field guide to them like wildflowers this one we didn't have the wildflower here one but I just picked this one up this is on birds so this isn't going to help you to deter determine what the herb is, okay? <laughs> Looking up what bird. I don't see the herb in here. Yeah, I know. But for illustration purposes, find one that is for your area, for your local area. Again, I see if I recommend a bunch of books, they're all going to be for northeastern America, you know, particularly the New England states. And we're in northern Maine, so we have a lot of things here that even people down south of here that are still in New England uh, don't have. Um, we're in a very far north region, but this little plant here, um, my wife picked some of this and she determined that it's called eyebright. And it's got all kinds of medicinal purposes, including uh, even some healing of the eyes. So you don't need glasses anymore. Pretty interesting. Um, but the way she identified this is picked it, looked it up in a field guide. Okay, it's in there or, oh, it's not in this one. Looked it up you know, in another field guide or whatever else. Oh, okay, it's called eyebright. Then you look up, all right, medicinal uses for eyebright. Um, that's basically how you do it. That's what we're doing so far. As far as finding books of how to prepare tinctures or teas or poultices or whatever, there's a whole lot of ways that you can use an herb. Um, again, I can't really recommend anything there. And, and even if I did, it still is our region. See, so you have to, to wherever you're at, you could be in southwest of America, you know, desert type of area. Um, you could be in California, you could be in Washington State, you could be in Florida, you could be anywhere and in other countries as well. We have a lot of brethren in other countries. Um, it's going to be different for each of us. So look for field guides of plants in your area. You might even, you know, be blessed enough to find an actual book that says about medicinal plants or edible wild edible or what edible wild plants in whatever your region is there wherever you're at um, and you know I honestly believe that native plants and that's another thing too you got you got to check into native versus invasive species a lot of people would bring herbs from their homeland to America and you get these things growing out here and it's not even native to the area there's some issues there but I believe that God created the herbs to help you in whatever environment that you're in. Okay, so that's why it's important to study not worldwide herbal herbology. It's somewhat okay, but you really need to find what are the herbs, what are the plants in your locality, where you live, the environment around you, because those are the herbs that you need to survive in that area. Another example would be raw honey. Raw honey, don't buy, I'm not gonna buy raw honey from an organic farm in California. Why? Because those bees are pollinating plants and flowers and things out there that we don't have here in northern Maine. Okay? I buy local raw honey from not too far north of here. Um, that's important. Again, it's going to help you with allergies and things like that. I had very terrible allergic reactions um, in the spring, you know, when you get to really high pollen and uh, started to eat and, uh, a lot of raw honey. From the area here and my allergic problem went away um, because it's basically a natural i hate to use the term vaccination but it's a natural way of getting the pollen into your system and things so that you don't react to it all right to try and make it as simple as i can but um you know it's it's actually really a lot of fun uh when you you know because I, I i rip on television i rip on video games and things like that and people say oh what kind of dull life it's not a dull life Okay, you go out there in the nature, 
I mean, you don't have to live out in the middle of nowhere like we do. I mean, you can you can go to a park, you can take a, a weekend, go out camping and whatever else, and just take a field guide or two with you and go around and say, oh, I wonder what this is. And you pick this thing and you, I wonder what that is. And you look up and you think, well, there it is. I wonder if that's it. And you, and you read about the description of it and where it grows and that's the one. And, and then you realize it's called eyebright and you say, what are the uses for that? And that'll lead you, the Lord will lead you into this whole thing. Again, your health is going to be different than mine. Your issues that you struggle with are different than mine. So I can't tell you everything that you need to know. It's, you know, I, I, and even with the Bible, when I preach the Bible, I'm pointing people to Jesus Christ and to the King James Bible as your final authority, not to me. I'm trying to help people to develop that personal relationship with the Lord. And part of that is where you're at, He'll show you what plants you should be putting into your diet through teas, through eating, through whatever. Okay, so that's my kind of big answer to that question. Um, that's what I recommend. Get a field guide. Start out with a field guide. Start out simple. Get to know the plants in your area. See, is this an herb? Is it just a, you know, it's kind of funny because man came up with the term weed, you know, in terms of they just call this all out here weeds. It's all just weeds. Well, those weeds all have names, okay? It's not weeds that Monsanto helps you to get rid of with glyphosate or something. Uh, no, they all have names. They all have specific purposes. And uh, there's herbs are for the healing of man, all right? So uh, I hope that answers people's questions. Uh, you know, again, I've seen people write in the comments and they say, I, I have this problem or that problem or whatever else. Uh, people, let me just give you a very soft rebuke, a very loving rebuke, and I, and I love you, you know, out there if you're struggling with health things and you're really looking for natural health causes, or uh, not causes, cures, um, you need to do your own research. Okay, hey, hey, brother Brian, what do I do for type, di type 2 diabetes? What do I need to do for asthma? What do I need to do for cancer? What do I need to, I don't know. I haven't had those things. Um, hey, hey, brother Brian, what do I do for headaches? Okay, I can help you. I've had headaches, bad headaches. Lots of migraines. Hey, Brother Brian, what do I do for high blood pressure? Oh, well, I can help you there. Okay? I can at least point you in the right direction. But it ultimately, it comes down to you. All right? Type in on YouTube in the little search field there, natural cures for whatever you have. Okay? Herbal cure book uh, for the Pacific Northwest. For the Southwest of America. National Audubon Society book of flowers for whatever. Get a field guide for flowers. Get a field field guide for trees. There's trees and you know shrubs and things like that that have medicinal cures. It's study. You know what I mean? Well, uh, brother Brian, what's the Bible say about such and such? Oh, I don't know. Do you have a concordance? Look it up. Okay. You know, uh, hey, brother, could you please uh, have the Lord intervene for me? And could you tell the Lord to do this in my life? No. If you're saved, you talk to him. There's one mediator between God and men. The man, Brian, no, no, the man, Christ Jesus. Okay? So, I love you. I do. That's why I make these videos. You know, if I didn't love people, I wouldn't be making these videos. Uh, so, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry. Thank you for your friendship. We'll see you in the next video.